in this video, I'm going to go over different painting techniques, um, like mixing tints and shades, blending wet on wet, so a lot of paint with a lot of paint, or blending with water to help smooth out some lines, um, some tips on outlining, layering, uh, what different brushes do, so flat brushes versus round brushes, how to outline stuff, and then techniques like scumbling or impasto, just those more like gestural techniques. I'm going to start by mixing tints and shades. So some of you have done this before, some of you have not. Uh, a tint is always adding white to make a color lighter and a shade is adding a color to make it darker. Um, I have black here, which is typically what you would use to mix shades, but another thing you can do is add the complement. So a complement would be like if you're mixing a shade of red to make it a little darker, you can add black or you can add the complement, which would be green. Um, I might go and get some blue paint to do that. Uh, but I'm going to do tints first. So I'm going to make a tint of red. I'm going to take a little bit of red and put it in there. And then I'm going to take a little bit of my white and I'm going to mix it together. And that is a tint of red. Um, it's just to get a lighter tone. I'm going to put just a little bit on here. My brush is really loaded up when I'm doing this and I'm using a flat brush. I want to start to create a gradient. Um, because that's another thing that you want to learn is just how to transition stuff. I'm going to go just right to the plain hue. So I'm going to just move my paintbrush over the area going back and forth or going up and down just so they start to blend with one another on the paper. I can also go back, add a little bit more white to my paint palette and add that right here on the lighter side to make that a little bit lighter. This is just a whole lot of going back and forth to create a transition. Okay, so that would be a tint. I'm going to go and get blue paint. Wow, with movie magic, uh, blue has appeared. Yes, I said it. Yes, I know it's lame. I'm going to take a little bit of blue <clears throat> and I also got a paper towel and then I'm going to add a little bit of green on there. So I could, I mean a little bit of yellow, so I can make a green. And I'm just gonna mix it in this section. Um, you guys can be using multiple paint palettes. Uh, you can be using tin foil to mix colors, or I also have the resealable paint palettes that you can be using. So you'll have another uh, circle, so they have more space. But I am making a tint of red. I'm gonna make, a. it's already turning a little bit darker. Um, it's turning a little bit brown. Uh, when painting, it's always better to go a little bit brown than a little bit black. And I say that because browns as a shade, so as a darker color than your base, always look a little bit more natural than black. I can also add a tiny bit of black into there just to make it a little bit darker. I have a color that I want, so I'm going to put it on my paper. And then I'm going to gradually mix in more red to this and start to blend it together to create a smoother transition. So I could go a little bit darker. I could add a little bit more blue in there to make it a little bit darker, um, but it might go a little bit violet. A lot of paint mixing and like the color theory stuff, it's all through experimentation. So you can just try mixing stuff together. Um, now is the time to learn, now is the time to use my resources, use all of my paint. Don't feel afraid to use it, just don't pur purposefully waste it. Um, but if you want to mess around and mixing colors, uh, feel free to do that. Just so you can see how stuff works together. So that, that's looking pretty good to me. I'm going to add just the tiniest bit more black to go a little bit darker. There you go, and I have a gradient. Um, so that is mixing tints right there, mixing shades right there. I'm gonna do blending wet on wet. And what I mean by that is just blending with the paint itself. So I'm gonna just glob on some paint there. I am a notorious messy painter, um, which means I uh, go in a little bit more impressionistic in my methods, which means it's not always the best blurred. Um, I've transitioned to that with time. I just like the style a little bit more, but I can do either way. So I'm basically going back and forth 
on here to help blend the paint together. And my paintbrush is moving back and forth. And I'm doing this with a bigger paintbrush um, and it's with a flat paintbrush, but you can also do it with a round brush as well. I'm using the side of the brush and just making swooping motions. Just the paint overlapping one another will help to blend it. Another thing you can do is you can actually mix paint with water. So I'm gonna go just right here. Oh, I, I did not wash that off well enough. Too late now. Um, I'm gonna go from red, I mean, oh my gosh, yellow to red. I guess it turned orange because I did not wash my brush. I'm gonna have a harsher outline there, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip my paintbrush in water Tap it off a little bit, but there's still water on my brush. And then in that area, I'm gonna just overlap them by making the same swooping motions or circular motions. And this helps just to create a transition. I still had a little too much paint on that paintbrush, uh, but I can always go back in with yellow, layer over top of it and it'll be fine. Um, that's the nice thing about acrylic versus the watercolor is you can layer acrylic over top of it and cover it up. It works better when it's dry, but it can still be done. You also don't need to worry about putting a hole through your canvas either, which is very nice. So it's been kind of taboo to use water to blend with acrylic, or I was always growing up told never to use water with acrylic. You can use water with acrylic. Um, I, I think it helps blend stuff a little bit better than I originally expected. Um, so you can also use it to create a transition. I just watched a video about how you like create a transition with a cloud and it was so graceful. Um, and they did it by creating an outline that was something like this, except more cloud-like. They dipped their paintbrush in water and made circular motions to blend out that line a little bit. So this does give it a little bit more of an airy feel, um, but it's still possible to do. So don't be afraid to use a little bit of water. The canvas can take it. Okay, so layering I will talk about with scumbling. So now I'm gonna go over flat brushes versus round brushes. So flat brushes are best used to get a full amount of space um, filled simply, and they're for more like the larger amounts of space, not as much the tiny ones. You can also use them to um, create some cool shapes. So I like to use it, I like to paint flowers, that's a lot of the subject matter that I do, um, to create like leaves for flowers. So I can mix it together and just create nice and simple leaf shapes really easily. Uh, with paint brushes, it's all about control too. You want to be confident with your paint strokes. Like if you hesitate, you'll more likely make a mistake um, than if you just go in confidently with it. Paint, like all art materials, can kind of sense fear. So you gotta go in with some confidence and you gotta just get it done. Um, so that's what I like to use them for, for filler or for larger spaces or to just kind of figure out how it manipulates. If you wanna test it out, feel free to test it out on your own. Um, but round brushes are more for the fine details. So say I want to create a darker color and actually like outline my leaves. That would be what you use the round brushes for and specifically just the smaller ones. Um, a smaller brush will always help you get more finer lines on there and then to get those final details. Okay, so that was a little bit of outlining too. If you outline, you can do it with a small round brush. Uh, you can also manipulate the flat brushes to work for you too. You can just twist it um, the way that your line goes and that'll help you outline it as well. But I find that the round brush works better. Um, if you are using the round brush and you find that it's like building up paint, feel free to just take it off. If you have too much paint, it'll get hard, be hard to find to get a fine line. Like if I load it up with paint 
it's going to be a little bit thicker. I'm going to get those awkward lines of paint on the side. But if I just wash it off a little bit and I am uh, like twisting my paintbrush and the paper towel to make sure that the tip is a little bit pointed, I can dip it in and now I can get a much finer line. So if you have a buildup of paint, just rinse it off, start again, and you'll be able to achieve much, much finer details than before. Okay, so uh, scumbling and pasto um, and those more abstract like impressionist techniques that I'm a big fan of are done by layering and positioning colors next to one another. Um, so I like to just glob on the paint and this is what I, I'm a messy painter. I'm just a messy painter. Like, look at my palette. Um, this is just more sporadic lines next to one another. You kind of let the paint just kind of overload and mix itself. You can go back afterwards and smooth it out, but a little texture never hurt anyone either. So feel free to just layer it on and let the paint do what it's meant to do. Uh, you can also layer like light, like this was yellow and that's already starting to blend. The brush strokes that I'm making are like tap, 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 tap. And then I start overlapping them and then I can go in with a different color and fill that in too. Another thing you can actually do with paint that's not on here that I just remembered is scraffito. Uh, scraffito is where you layer something on and then take it away. So imagine that this is like, wow, it's a beautiful flower. And I wanna add some more details to it. I have toothpicks in here, but you can also use the back of a paintbrush to make lines however you would want to do. And you can make an impression on it. So those are a few painting techniques. I hope this helps out.